and welcome to Eco Farm. As you know by now, this is episode 11, and we're going to go through our daily chores just to give you a feel for what we will have to do every morning. It'll obviously grow as the different productions come online as we go on. The first thing that I always do is um, do the pig feed which means I need to sort out the the flour mill because we get we get pig feed from there not in not nearly enough to make us self-sufficient on pig feed but it does help a little bit it looks like we've got about 3,000 liters worth of pig feed and we'll probably need about 24,000 liters for them for the for the day just so two full um, two full tra trailer loads but at least this uh, is going some way to uh, to becoming self-sufficient as we start growing different root crops over time maybe we'll increase our I think one of the first things I'll do is increase our our mills and flour production um, simply because that kind of pays for the for the producing of the pig feed whereas we, if we uh, plant specifically to get um, crops to make pig feed from scratch um, we have the expense of course of of preparing the lands and planting of harvesting and then of production before we get the pig feed whereas this all those costs are kind of taken care of by the flour sales and um, moving the flour onto the bread mills so I kind of think that's the way we're going to go we're going to become big millers but um, yeah I'm not quite sure it might be a bit boring to do it that way so maybe we'll do a little bit of both but for now while we're trying to Get ourselves going we'll stick with what we're doing now we'll buy in the rest of the pig feed um, of course we are getting manure from it but manure is a relatively cheap commodity to buy as opposed to buying in pig feed um, but yeah we don't want to just buy in when we can produce ourselves that's not the way eco farms work right so that's 3,000 liters in there We'll pop around and go and buy some pig feed, fill it up, we'll put that in and then later during the day we'll we'll put another load in just to make sure that they are well fed and looked after of course. Right, so we've got over 12,000 litres of flour in there, that's good. We've got some noodles and bread to be sold. We'll take those down once we've, uh, as part of our, our morning chores course bread noodles I suppose we could uh, because it's a dry product we could store until we get a good price for it but right now we need all the income we can so we'll be selling straight away vegetables the vegetables and the eggs of course are, um, are fresh products so that they need they need to go into the market straight away regardless of well, I won't say regardless of price but regardless of where the price pricing is in the in the yearly scheme of things if you get what I mean so we'll still sell to where, where we can get the best price but um, it would be relative to what the best yearly price would be that's just one thing that I should do at night is um, I should recharge our tractor get some more juice into it in the evenings but luckily this is a quick charge station so it doesn't take too long to get it up to full capacity I suppose we should um, and I think it's what we eventually will do when we get a bit more money is we'll have a dedicated garage for our for our electric vehicles there's a couple more electric vehicles that I eventually want to get um, as well and um, we'll have charging stations so that we'll just park them up at night put them on the charging station and be ready to go in the morning. 
I mean, he still had a bit of juice in there. Could have gone for a little while, but yeah, yeah. So we just topped that up to twelve thousand. So there was another eight thousand. So we saved ourselves three the cost of three thousand liters there, which is considering that cost us eight thousand is probably saved us three thousand uh, three thousand dollars there. 3,000 euros, should I say. Let's get into the pigs here, and uh, it's a little bit difficult. The, as I've mentioned before, the actual feeding, the feeding stations are really, really tight. So it does take a little bit of a while to find them and to um, sometimes you have to do a bit of a a bump offload if you get what I mean sort of offload a bit then another more a little bit more I suppose that you should be traveling around to each one of these and filling them, <laughs> filling them up maybe that's why they were done that way just seems a little bit strange one of the minor criticisms I have of this um, this modular pig pen is that uh, the feeding is not that easy but I'm not particularly worried about it so that they put the triggers right in the center of the maybe they should be loaded from the top I don't know I suppose technically that's the way you would do it maybe put it on to we'll try that sometime put it onto something that has a auger on it but that's for another time there we go just doing the bumping bump bump delivery <laughs> oh dear right that's it all done yeah we'll we'll come and put another load in during the day just to make sure that they are self-sufficient for the for the whole of the month or well fed for the whole of the month self-sufficient they do do a bit of rooting around so they get other nutrients from the land itself the corn is ready to be harvested that'll probably be in the next episode it'll still be in the same month but uh, it'll be in the next episode and fields that we have planted need to be weeded so that's another job also for the next episode or maybe one after it's a busy month at this time of the year right so now we've got to go and feed the chickens of course so we planted a lot of wheat so we should in the next year we should be self-sufficient on wheat well, we hope I've planted enough wheat to become self-sufficient but we shall see but the wheat costs are much lower than the pig feed costs so that's pretty good we'll just go and top up the chickens glorious morning always lovely to be doing work with the animals and checking everything out in the morning seeing what's changed see what's growing see what needs to be done all good stuff then of course you've got to do it during the day <laughs> oh dear. I think I think one load should get close to doing it if not of course we can still put the any excess wheat into the into the mill, produce it into flour, make a bit of profit out of it. Yeah, so the expenses are quite high to start with. That's because we're still basically establishing ourselves and getting our our production line as such going of producing goods for the town. We've still got plenty of land that we can uh, plant crops on so everything from the pigs and up the left hand side of here so we've still got 
plenty of land for more fields. I don't think we'll go any more on the animal side of things. I think uh, chickens and pigs. Um, we may consider sheep, but I'm not sure. I don't think. I don't think. Um, I don't know. I'll have to. I'll have to do a bit of research. Uh, certainly won't won't be as bad as cattle in terms of um, effect on the environment, but it will have some sort of effect. But anything we do has some sort of effect. It's a question of balancing. Eco farming is a question of balancing the effect on the environment. Be it negative or positive, of course. And um, the end product and the survival of our town and ourselves, of course. Yeah, so it's a question of balancing those off. So we didn't quite have enough to fill up everything. So this is probably not going to take a lot of this. So we'll have quite a bit of wheat going into the mill. But that's fine, that'll keep us going with um, with pig feed, with production of pig feed, production of bread, production of noodles. Of course, during the course of this episode, we will be making our first delivery of noodles and, uh, and bread into town, so we'll be getting a bit of extra income there. But at this point of the time, there's no real, real big income coming in. We'll need to work on that. Um, I think when we have pigs ready for sale, we should start making a bit of money, but it's probably going to take a good good year to two years before we become reason well, getting reasonable return on the pigs, simply because um, we need to, of course, breed up new pigs as well. Luckily, they do breed pretty quickly. And they grow pretty quick, quick, quickly, but it still take a good two years before we um, anywhere near profit there. And then, of course, we still got to pay off the capital costs of that. But still, we're not going to go into that depth at this point in time. Right. So that's the wheat in there. And I think we need to go and uh, reconfigure our trailer so that we can uh, go and do some deliveries, get some money coming in. I don't think we've got much of a credit line left at the bank at this point in time. I think we've, I think we've just about done it all. I just want to check on oats, oat flour, and not oats, corn. Corn is what I want to look at. Yeah, so corn flour. We can we can get uh, pig feed from corn flour. got quite a bit of flour in the um, of course we just delivered that we saw that so that's going along quite nicely but we need to keep that going on so we would most probably need to put a load of wheat in just to um, to keep the flour the flour and of course then the pig feed going Right, we'll just pop into the workshop quickly, take off the sides. I wonder if I should put some more pig feed in first. That might be it might be best before we go and change the uh, configuration, get the pigs fed, get that job out of the way. Then we'll take the sides off. I am enjoying the drive through our farm. I've kind of just kept it in. I haven't um, edited it out just to just to create the. Um, the impression that I want that, you know, these are chores, although they go fairly quickly, do do take some time, you know, because you have to travel between places. Um, we have a big farm, so 
it's not it's not miles and miles, but uh, it all takes up a little bit of time, you know. But that's good. Gives you a chance to look through all the little piglets running around. Got to be careful not to drive over them. <laughs> Take us a little while just to get this all sorted, fed. It'll be interesting to see if we can have some rig up some sort of um, auger system. Hmm. Yeah. Not sure. And this is not the most efficient way to to be feeding. We should just be able to offload. Oh, we've gone. We've gone out of the. What do you call it now? Out of the trigger zone. Well, it's becoming a bit of a nuisance. <laughs> and there's always all these little things that get sent to test. That's done now. Pigs are happy. They've got plenty of place to root around. As per usual, make sure the gate's closed. Now, we've uh, got manure. I wonder how much we got. Yeah, we'll be able to start using that. We still won't cover all of the, the reasonable amounts, so it's good. Although we have to cover, we have to cover our losses for putting the wrong, the wrong, the wrong um, silo or storage system up. That's in the past. It's done and dusted. Can't do anything about that now. Right, now let's go and get this reconfigured and then we'll uh, go and deliver our noodles and bread and eggs to the farm shop I think is where I looked to see where the best price was overall for those three and then of course we'll take come back and do the the greenhouses which will go into our market stall in town. Let's get that all down there. Yeah, it's good. Doesn't cost us anything of course. Just to change it over. Just a little bit of time. They come off easily. Right here. Off we go. Didn't want to drive past the uh, the vegetables. So noodles. Yeah. So the selling station grain gate is at the farm shop. So that's a farm shop. That's where the noodles are selling best. Um, so I reckon that's where we're going to deliver. Then we'll take in the the bread and the. Um, the eggs there to the same place. I think I did check up. I think I think the bread we could probably get a better price. I can't remember where, but it was it was marginal. And I think the eggs the best price was at the farm shop, which is which is the same the same building, just different. Uh, or float areas. Let's get those all loaded up. Yeah, a reasonable amount. We'll pop up and go and pick up the uh, eggs now.
nearly forgot. <laughs> and luckily I have two, uh, two access roads. <laughs> It'll be nice when these uh, chickens are producing a little bit more. We've got room to add some more um, chickens in should we should it be necessary. Still, of course, we're clearing every day, so we're not waiting for things to for pallets to become full. So it's not bad production. It's pretty good actually. Quite happy with that. So this is a this is a decent load going down. I could of course have loaded up all the vegetables as well, but I want to make sure that those go into our farm, a farmer's market. Sometimes we can take the strawberries up to the farm shop. They sometimes give us a better price. Most of the other stuff sells down there. So I think we'll do deliver the eggs first, and then uh, just nip around the back. And uh, I think the bread will go here as well. Yeah, and just nip around the back to deliver the noodles. Just different warehouses on the same for the same shop. Well, to see, yeah, so just under four thousand there. That's that's all right. It's good money. We'll nip on back up to the farm, and uh, we'll go and pick up the the greenhouse product, watermelons. I think we got some watermelons, and then the product from the other greenhouse. We've got lots of scope to um, to expand on the greenhouse production, um, so that will be one of the one of the mainstays of the farm, and um, also we'll be doing some fruit trees in the fairly near future. So we're looking forward to that. So there's lots of things being planned. Some onions. So I think we'll have an at least another mixed vegetable greenhouse. Watermelon. I'm quite happy with watermelon as it is now. It's not a great big seller. And um, yeah, and then we'll w work on the fruit trees. And we can most probably we might be able to put some sort of um, juicing production down so if we can make some fruit juices as well that's a good idea planning on the planning on the hop at the moment <laughs> oh dear oh, we might we might have to oh, yeah we're getting ahead of myself thinking about buying more land as I was driving down I was thinking of whether we expand back towards the town or sideways I suppose it depends on how the town's going to grow with us um, putting in um, inputs into the town making it more attractive as we build more um, if, if we start getting into productions we will have to It'll have to be housing for people, so the town will have to grow, I suppose. Which is progress. I suppose we have to, first of all, try and get um, the town onto some sort of renewable energy system as well. 
So that's another another thing that we can start thinking about. Maybe some maybe a wind farm. That's a possibility. But we'll see. Alright, so how much are we gonna get for this? It's not huge money, but it's nice money. It's then it's consistent, it's every month. Being in the greenhouse, we can supply all year round. Input costs are a bit higher, but yeah, just over five grand. Yeah, so it's a reasonable amount of income coming in every month. Still, most probably not quite covering all the costs. But as I said, I think our credit line is just about exhausted, so we're going to have to be self-sufficient now. We're going to have to be managing our cash a little bit, a little bit better, should we say? Just head on back up to the farm. I think that's pretty much where we're going to end this episode. That's the daily chores done. Do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please like and subscribe. And we'll catch you in the next episode. Cheerio!